Okay. Let's show each other our happy look. Okay, I'll do mine. You do yours. We'll show each other like. <laughs> oh, I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. Oh yeah, you're doing some good happy looks. Okay, now let's show each other our uncomfortable look. Like, oh, 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 I'm, I'm, oh, I'm just not, I'm not very comfortable. <sighs> oh yeah, some of you look real uncomfortable. Okay, we'll stop that. Oh, but now let's show each other how we look when someone's being mean to us. Oh, stop that. Oh, you're being, oh, they're being mean. No. Oh, okay, that's enough of that. Let's not do that. <laughs> we are going to talk about being happy, being uncomfortable, and meanness. Oh, we're going to talk about that. But first, we're going to ask ourselves some questions. Do we think that God can use everything to accomplish his purpose? That's the first question. The next question is, do we know what accomplish means? Yeah, it means getting something done. Like if we have a job, and we get it done. That means we accomplished it. Do we know that God's plan is perfect for all people? Do we know God's plan sometimes gets done in ways that surprise us? Do we know that even if someone is mean, God can use that to get his job done. Let's all scratch our heads and say, oh, sounds kind of funny. <laughs> Do you know what I've been doing? Yes, I've been reading the Bible. This is what I read about in the Bible. I, read it, I was reading in the New Testament in the Bible. I was reading about Jesus living on earth, about Jesus being God and being man at the same time, about Jesus being crucified to be punished for the sins that everyone else did when he didn't do any, and about Jesus having disciples. How many? Good, you said 12, good. And about the 12 disciples traveling with Jesus how many years? Right, you know that too, three years. And about Jesus traveling where? Where did they travel? Whoa, Israel, right, you were good. What did the disciples see Jesus do? Heal people, teach, be crucified, and come back to being alive again. What do we call that? becoming alive again. Resurrection, right? Good job. Jesus told the disciples to wait for God the Father, to send them God the Holy Spirit, to live in them. Then Jesus told them to tell everyone about the good news. What do we call the good news? Yeah, the gospel. Then Jesus went back up into heaven what do we call that, what Jesus did going back into heaven? Ascension. He ascended back into heaven. We learned about that. And the disciples did receive the Holy Spirit, who came and lived inside of them. The day that happened is called, does anybody remember that? You remembered it. Pentecost. Good. The disciples then started telling everyone in Jerusalem the gospel. People believed what they heard about Jesus. And we say they were believers. The believers started what is the church. For a while, all new believers stayed real close to the disciples because they wanted to learn more and more about Jesus. Oh, but it was getting to be time 
for them to all obey the instructions Jesus had given them. He had told them to begin telling people in Jerusalem, but then to start spreading out and telling people here and here and here until they told people all over the whole world. Maybe, maybe no one wanted to leave Jerusalem. Maybe they were all having such a good time, they were happy, that no one wanted to go anyplace else. I don't know, but no one was leaving Jerusalem to obey until God allowed them to feel uncomfortable in Jerusalem. What was uncomfortable about it? Hmm. Remember last week when we talked about Stephen? He was one of the seven men who was in charge of making sure the women had enough food to eat and he was filled with the Holy Spirit and he told people about Jesus. He was a believer. But remember that the unbelievers who were in Jerusalem still were mean to him. Remember they argued with him and they frowned at him and they gnashed their teeth at him and they dragged him out of the town and they threw stones at him so many, so hard, that he died? Yeah. Well, another of the men, who of the, those seven men who were in charge of helping the women to be sure that they had enough food, was Philip. So now, Philip, uh, along with the other believers, started to feel uncomfortable in Jerusalem. Why? Oh, because the unbelievers started to be mean to all of them. Real mean. Thinking mean, looking mean, talking mean, hurting them, taking their stuff, hurting their feelings. Oh. There's a word for that. When they were being mean because the other people believed something that they didn't believe, it's called persecution. They were persecuting the people, the believers. So that was all so uncomfortable that the believers started leaving Jerusalem and going to new places to live. In the new places, the believers told everyone about Jesus. Oh, we can recognize what was happening. They were really obeying what God had told them to do. Jesus had said, go and tell about me. Now they were doing that. So God was helping them to accomplish his purpose, his perfect plan. Philip, that other man that we were talking about who was in the group with Stephen, he went to a town in Samaria, and it, I think the town was also called Samaria. It was Samaria in Samaria. When he got there, he started doing what he loved to do, telling people about Jesus. He was talking about Jesus, telling all the things that he had learned about from the disciples in Jerusalem. And the people there in that town in Samaria listened and they believed. They became believers. So now let's remember about angels of what they do. They give messages from God to people. Well, an angel gave a message to Philip and he said, leave Samaria and go to a certain road. Hmm. Well, let's pretend that we can see that road. Let's use our binocular hands like this, like, oh yeah, oh. Yeah, I see, okay, I see the road. I see it up there. It starts up there in Jerusalem and it kind of winds down like this and it, it goes through this town that's called Gaza and it, oh look, it's going through some desert and it gets way down here to Ethiopia. Do you like the name of that place? I do. It goes from Jerusalem to Ethiopia. So, the angel told Philip, go to that road. So Philip went, 
started walking on that road. Now, if we were there, we could walk on that road like Philip did. Or if we were real important, if we, oh, worked for the queen of Ethiopia, we wouldn't walk on the road. We'd ride in a chariot. Mm -hmm. You know a chariot? It's like a wagon. It's attached to some horses and there's a driver in the front who's using the horse's reins and there's a person sitting in the back real cushy and nice with cushions and a fan and oh, maybe some lemonade or something. Well, that's what was happening. There was a man who was very important who was riding in a chariot. And the Holy Spirit said to Philip, go up to that man in the chariot. So Philip did. That man riding in the chariot did live in a palace in Ethiopia and work for the queen. He was in charge of all of her money. As he rode along, he was reading from a scroll. Remember, the Old Testament scriptures were written in scrolls, not books like this, but I don't know if he was reading the scroll like by opening it up, up and down or opening it up sideways and reading. I don't know. I don't know which way it was, but it was a scroll. So Philip ran up to him and he said, Philip said to the man from Ethiopia, do you understand what you're reading? And the man from Ethiopia said, no, how can I understand? I need someone to explain it to me. Oh, who do you think could explain Isaiah's writings? Philip. Why? Well, because he'd been in Jerusalem learning all about Jesus and all about the Old Testament writings, including Isaiah, from the disciples. And he had been in Samaria, in Samaria, teaching everybody all about that. He knew all about it. And because he was a believer, he had the Holy Spirit in him who helped him to do it. So he got right up into the chariot with the man from Ethiopia. And the man from Ethiopia read from the scroll to Philip. And listen, this is what he read to him. It said, he was led as a sheep to the slaughter. Like a lamb is silent before his shearer, he opened not his mouth. He was treated unfairly. His life was taken away. That's what he read. And then the man from Ethiopia said to Philip, is Isaiah talking about himself? Is he talking about someone else? Well, Philip explained all about that. He told about Isaiah being one of the prophets that God had right about the Messiah was going to come and the Messiah was going to save people from their sins and then people would be able to believe in the Messiah and have eternal life. And then he told him about how Jesus came and was the Messiah and he did everything that is needed for people to have eternal life. The man from Ethiopia listened carefully. Let's show each other what it's like to listen carefully, like. And then he thought about it a little. And then he said, I understand. I get it. Oh, oh my goodness. Yes, I see what you're saying. I understand it. And, and look at that. Look right up in front of us. There's a pool of water pretty soon. What would keep me from getting baptized right here? And Philip said to him, you may get baptized if you believe with your whole heart. The man from Ethiopia said, yes, I believe that Jesus, Jesus is Christ, the Messiah, the Son of God. So he yelled to the chariot driver, stop the chariot. And the man from Ethiopia and Philip got out of the chariot and they went down into that pool of water and Philip baptized him down into the water and up out of the water. 
<laughs> okay, let's do a snatch. First of all, let's say that word because it's a, it's a good word too. Snatch, like we gotta say it with some good, good pronouncing. Snatch, say it like that. Snatch, good. Okay, now let's put our hands up together and let's grab and jerk. Ah, like that. That's snatching. Let's grab and jerk and say snatch. Snatch. That's what happened to Philip right then. <laughs> right, right then, Philip was snatched away from there. Except nobody saw the hands snatching him. But we learn in the Bible that Philip was just suddenly gone. He was gone and he was set back down on a road in a place called Azotus. I don't know where that is. I think the Ethiopian man was probably very surprised that Philip was now gone, but he was still real happy. I think Philip was real surprised too, but he just started walking around and telling people there about Jesus. So God's plan was happening more and more, it was getting accomplished more and more. Remember Jesus had told the disciples that they were to be going and telling everyone everywhere. And then Stephen told lots of people. And then Philip told lots of people. And the persecuted believers told lots of people. And now the man traveling back to Ethiopia could tell the queen and all the other people in the palace. And I don't know who they would tell more people. How did that all get started? By the Holy Spirit and by unbelievers persecuting the believers. So we see God does use everything to get his job done for us, even uses the mean persecutors. All of that is good, good news. We could say that's gospel. God worked it all out, so even the mean, uncomfortable things helped God's perfect plan to be accomplished. God has a plan, and what is God doing with that plan? He is accomplishing it. I have another thing to tell you. You can do this if you want. You can call, or you can email, and you can tell us, who, how, and where. <laughs> what I mean by that is, if you want to receive activity sheets and surprises in the mail, you can tell us who you are, like give us your name. You can tell us how old you are, your age. And you can tell us your mailing address, where you are. And if you want to send that information to us, here we've got for you the phone number, the email address and just send it to us and we'll send something back to you. How does that sound? 